Hello, welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, and if you're buying an electric car, you might have seen an option for a standard range or an extended range or long range battery. So different battery options give you, of course, different ranges and different trade-offs. And there might be a lot of cases where you're actually fine going with less range and that smaller battery. So today in this video, my colleague Ryan and I are gonna go over the options in the market that do actually let you choose a smaller standard range battery, what that entails, the pros of it, and why you might wanna select the extended range battery and pay more in certain cases. So let's go over it. All right, Ryan, we're actually driving a standard range car right now. It's your Tesla. That's right. I ended up buying a Model 3 rear wheel drive and that comes with the standard range smaller battery. Yes, uh, similar situation applies if you get a Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive. Uh, so that smaller battery, Ryan, it's giving you less range in this car. That's still a lot actually, it's 270 miles, right? 272 is the EPA rated range. We also took it on a 70 mile per hour range test and got 264 miles. So there's still plenty of usable range here. When we look at standard range options in other vehicles, sometimes we're looking closer to 210 miles, but generally in at least that 200 mile ballpark, that seems to be the benchmark, uh, the benchmark a lot of manufacturers target. So Ryan, like I'm thinking of vehicles like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and also the Ford F-150 Lightning. Uh, we've got the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Ioniq 6. We've got the Kia EV6. We've got the upcoming Hyundai Kona Electric uh, that's re being refreshed to offer a standard range battery option. Uh, we've got like your car and the Y we mentioned with Tesla, Rivian, offers a standard pack that you can configure on their website. Uh, and then Porsche also on the Taycan has a smaller battery, Nissan does on the Aria, and Lucid does on the Air. So Ryan, generally with a smaller battery, what are you looking at? Uh, the biggest one is of course cost, and it'll cost less to buy it. And that's a huge, huge factor for a lot of people and for a lot of very obvious reasons. Yeah. It sounds obvious, but I really can't overstate the fact that like, depending on the vehicle you're looking at, like I think the F-150 uh, XLT is a big example of this, uh, you're saving like over, well over five grand just by going with less range. And the larger battery, Ryan, doesn't always deliver a, like, let's call it a linear range increase that's like commensurate with how much bigger you think the battery would be. Because typically, Ryan, these uh, standard range batteries are also offered with a rear wheel drive on a vehicle. Uh, not in the case of the Lightning, but in the case of most of these other ones they are. Uh, which Ryan means those cars are actually more efficient. So, okay, you got a smaller battery and less range, but it's not as much less range as you would think. That's right. With better efficiency means better range. So it's actually a little bit closer than you might initially expect a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And then if you like, you know, do the configurator and go in the build site, you'll see, right, Ryan, like when I go to a Hyundai Onyx 5 um, with the standard range battery, and then I bump it to all wheel drive, all wheel drive, I'm still getting more range because it's a larger battery, but not as much as you would think, right? Uh, the largest range, if you just care about range in this video and that's what you want like in a vehicle, okay, get the one that if it offers rear wheel drive, does that and has the larger battery. There are situations where I think it can help people a lot, uh, specifically like I'm thinking with Rivian, right? You can configure a standard range Rivian and have a lot more room to add on some options like wheels or a nice paint option, uh, and then still stay under $80,000 for the federal tax incentive. Yeah, I think that's a really great example of uh, why some of these standard range vehicles could be a really good option. Yeah, and maybe that sounds obvious to you, like, okay, so what, it's cheaper but it's not enough range for me. Well, you gotta ask yourself, is it? Ryan, let's think, like the average US commute is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 miles. For many people, it's less. For some people, it might be more. But let's consider, Ryan, a 200 mile range EV, like if you've got a standard VW ID4, let's say. Um, so 200 miles, okay, you're gonna be able to get comfortably an 80 mile commute in both ways in one day and be okay. Now, Ryan, if it's cold and it's winter, yes, there's some situations where now you're on the threshold of the range you have and you may want to be a little bit more worried. Those are edge cases, but those are something to consider. So I would say, you know, do some math to figure out how much range you actually need in an average day, like divide your commute uh, or take your commute time and the round trip and then give in some buffer for winter and other adverse conditions, depending on where you live and then figure, okay, maybe I need extended range, but in all these situations, Ryan, that it works within the context of a day, that's okay, because you can charge overnight at home. 
Right, and I think that's something really important to keep in mind is a lot of people coming from gas cars keep have that perspective. Those oftentimes will do 300, 400 miles in a tank. And consequentially, a lot of people will be filling up their car once a week, once every other week. And a lot of people think once they switch to EV, that means, oh shoot, now I'm gonna have to be charging up the same amount. Uh, so every week, every other week, except maybe the range is even less. And of course, charging takes longer than filling up. However, that's not necessarily the case, especially if you have home car charging. If you have home charging, you're almost never going to be using public charging. You're never gonna be out going to charge your vehicle. You're going to wake up every morning with pretty much a full battery or equivalent to a full tank of gas. Yep, you don't have to think of the metaphor of going to the gas station anymore. It is a really big factor for quality of life. Uh, and then Ryan, kind of a nerdy note here, LFP as a different kind of battery chemistry being offered typically on the standard range cheaper vehicles. So that applies to Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y, the newest Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Rivians with the standard range pack. Uh, and LFP, Ryan, it's got some interesting advantages actually. Certainly, this car is one of them. And the biggest thing with LFP batteries is there's not a lot of degradation when you charge up to 100%. This is not the case for most EV batteries. A lot of EV batteries have some sort of degradation if you charge up to 100%. So it's suggested that you only charge up to say 80% for day-to-day -day use. That's not necessarily the case with LFP batteries. There isn't that penalty and you're able to charge up and get 100% of the range every day. Yep, so although it's less range, you're actually able to use, especially if you have home charging, like we mentioned, all of it every day. Right, and a lot of times it often works out that 80% or your daily charging limit of the long range is really close to 100% of the range of the standard range version. Meaning from day to day use, you're not gonna see a ton of difference between the standard range and long range. Exactly. I'd summarize what we said so far is basically you might not need as much range as you think, and you might not be losing out on as much range with a standard range battery, Ryan, as you may fear. Now, there's still situations, Ryan, where it's absolutely like a case you want the extended range battery. So road trips are really obvious, right? Like let's say someone road trips a lot, they're probably saving a lot of time with an extended range, right? Yeah, I think they're saving a good bit of time. And the way that I would put it is that the long range battery is a really nice luxury to have on road trips. However, a lot of times the road trip times are gonna be actually pretty similar between the standard range and long range. Sometimes it's, it's even just a half hour difference over an eight hour drive. So there's not as much of a difference uh, in going for the standard range as uh, compared to the long range. However, you're going to have a bit easier time using the long range on a road trip. Yeah, I think the big example of this is like efficiency and charging performance of standard range batteries that have you know good charging performance can make up a lot for the fact that they're smaller batteries. This is why we see vehicles like the Porsche Taycan do really well on road trips. Uh, even though they may not have the largest battery capacity or range, uh, they just are such, so if they're in some ways sometimes surprisingly efficient or they can charge really well. So charging and efficiency which we've made videos about with vehicles too, can kind of be a good hack to get more range or just more usability without needing that larger battery. Uh, but Ryan, there are trims, uh, like with Tesla for instance, right? Let's say you wanted the all-wheel drive, and most of these vehicles you want all-wheel drive or you want a nicer trim, you are gonna be uh, opting at that point for the extended range battery because it's kind of bundled in. That's right, and in a similar vein, you also sometimes have features that are locked behind the bigger battery. Uh, for example, if you wanted to have ventilated seats, a lot of times you'll also have to get the bigger battery. Yeah, so there's like a sunroof, ventilated seats, a certain feature you want that's only available on the trim that has the big battery, well, that's what you've got to go with. Uh, and that is how it shakes out. I would say all wheel drive, if that's something you're really worked up about, I would consider, do you need it or do you not? Um, even in snowy climates, you know, like here where we live in Colorado, Ryan, you're fine with your rear wheel drive car uh, with the right tires on. That's right. I think a, a good pair of winter tires can do a lot. And unless you're really doing a lot of winter sports and doing a lot of driving under a lot of snow, I don't think all wheel drive is totally necessary. Yeah. 
Now, of course, right with the F-150 Lightning and the Rivian, well, you're gonna get all-wheel drive no matter what. That's how those vehicles are configured. But Ryan, let's say you are looking at those vehicles um, or even a Model Y, you might be considering doing some towing, which you can do. And towing, Ryan, that eats range. Absolutely, it takes a lot of energy to tow something. And in that case, it makes a lot of sense to go for the bigger battery. It'll make a difference there and you'll definitely notice it. Yep, you can't in situations like that just beat raw absolute energy capacity. That's what the bigger battery is giving you. That's where it might well be worth it. Then my last point is this is, you know, could depend on vehicle to vehicle. But Ryan, I suspect based off the way cars are configured and buyers expectations, that a vehicle with a large, the extended range battery is probably going to have a better residual or like a resale value when you come to sell it. Of course, right, you're spending more to buy it, but I think it might hold more of its value like proportionally because a lot of the secondhand market uh, for the reasons we outlined in this video doesn't intuitively know that maybe they don't want the extended range battery or need it they might just in implicitly want it and as a result your buying demographic of your vehicle with a standard range battery may be smaller certainly and like you mentioned of course bigger batteries cost more up front but I think a good bit of that can be softened uh, when you go to sell it again. I don't think the, de the depreciation could be uh, a little bit better when compared to some standard range vehicles. But of course, that's going to depend from vehicle to vehicle. Yeah, it's a very specific thing, but it's something I feel like might apply. And like, if you want the nicest one, yeah, sure, max it out, get all the options, but you don't always need to spend that money. And that's what I hope, uh, Ryan, that's what I hope we've kind of uh, instructed people or given them advice on today is consider your needs, you may not need that extended range. Right, it's a really nice luxury to have, but it's really not necessary. And a lot of times, a lot of people won't really see that much benefit. No, and it's so exciting to see all these great EVs that offer their own tangible benefits with efficiency and just low cost and optimization uh, that offer LFP or just these smaller batteries. It's smart, honestly. The range as a like value metric thing, I think we're gonna go away from the EVs as people get more and more used to uh, hopefully reliable charging and worrying about charging more than they do about the actual range of the vehicle. But that's just my hope. Fingers crossed. Anyhow, thank you for watching this video. Let us know if you have any comments or suggestions or you think we missed a big point about the differences between standard and extended range batteries, if there's a specific use case you think, if there's vehicles we didn't mention. A lot of this was US centric because in the US, Ryan, we don't get that many uh, standard range options. In Europe, many EVs have uh, standard range options. They just don't give in the US because I guess they think Americans want range. But enough of me ranting on that. Uh, thanks for joining me in this one. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. All right, see you guys, bye.